Hey, welcome back everyone. This is uh, Eric Sloof over at antipro.nl and in this video I'm going to give you an introduction into overlay networking in NSX with uh, Geneve. But first let's start with an introduction regarding virtual networking within vSphere with a standard switch. So what do we have? Um, yeah, we're using this virtual machine right here configured with a virtual network adapter. The network adapter is attached to a port group and the port group can be used to configure policies, security policies, bandwidth toggling, VLAN IDs. The port group is configured on a virtual switch and the virtual switch is attached to a physical network adapter. So eventually the traffic travels from the VRM into the port group, into the switch, onto the physical network adapter and from the physical network adapter it travels through the physical switch. On this physical switch you have to create a trunk port if you want to configure VLAN ID tagging on a port group. So that's how we normally isolate virtual machines when they run uh, on an ESXi host. So let's get a bit more in detail. Uh, let's see what is ha happening in the traditional world. And so we have an ESXi host on this host. We're hosting a VM. And so this is my virtual machine. Okay. Um, this virtual machine is configured with a virtual network adapter. The virtual network adapter is attached to a port group and the port group is created on a switch and the switch is configured with a physical network adapter and this physical network adapter is attached to a physical switch. Okay, so we have the same thing on the other side. So we have two VMs on different hosts and um, both virtual network adapters are attached to a port group and these port groups can be configured with a VLAN ID. Yeah? All good so far. So this is VLAN ID 100 and this is also VLAN ID 100. So the thing is that when you configure a VLAN ID, you also have to ask the network department to configure a trunk. So they must trunk this VLAN ID on the physical switch. Sometimes yeah, this can take a week, maybe a bit longer. We are depending on the network guys. These virtual machines are in the same layer 2 network. They have layer 2 adjacency. And so when this VM wants to communicate with this VM, the traffic goes into the port group, it goes to the virtual switch, it goes into the physical adapter, it goes into the physical switch. This is where it's living in the VLAN ID 100, it's trunked. And then the VLAN ID is uh, yeah, removed from the packet and the packet goes into the virtual machines. So these two VMs have layer two adjacency. They are in the same broadcast domain. When you have something that offers a customer to deploy virtual machines from a catalog and they want to instantly create networks then yeah waiting for the network department for those trunk ports the limitation of vlan ids and we don't want to wait or have those limitations what is the limitation of a vlan id a vlan id is 12 bits and 2 to the power of 12 is 4096 so from 0 to 4095 can be used as a vlan there are some uh, reserved addresses, uh, but theoretically you have roughly 4,000 addresses. When using NSX, we can step away from this. So what we do with NSX is we still have an ESXi host. Yeah, We still have our VM. That's completely transparent. We still have a virtual network adapter. The, diff the big difference is that we are now using a distributed switch that has been prepared for NSX. And when a distributed switch has been prepared for NSX, you can create segments on this switch. These segments are managed 
by VMware NSX, and they can be configured or they are configured with a VNI, a Virtual Network Identifier. These VNIs are 24-bit, and we start counting at 5,000. So that's the first segment ID we're going to use. So then we are overcome the problem that people get confused with regular VLAN IDs and segment IDs, VNIs. Okay, so far so good. So we are attaching the virtual network adapter of a VM to a segment, but then, then we need to prepare a special transport network. This transport network must be isolated. So we can put a VLAN ID, uh, we, can, we can create a VLAN ID and we can say, okay, we're going to put our transport network in VLAN ID 50. The MTU size of this transport network must be at least 1700. You can use Jumbo frames, uh, you can make it 9000. Make sure that these frame sizes are configured end to end. Yeah? Okay, so we have uh, a physical network adapter on the host. The physical network adapter is attached to our physical switch. Yeah? And the physical switch must be configured with just this one trunk port, trunk port 50. That's our transport network. We use it for overlay traffic. We need to configure one additional component on our dis distributed switch, or it's configured automatically by NSX, and that's a tunnel endpoint. And a tunnel endpoint is presented as a kernel port group. Yeah, so a VM kernel port group runs as a tunnel endpoint. Based on the on the policy you have for availability, you can have one or multiple tunnel endpoints. The tunnel endpoints is are used or is used for encapsulating traffic. So what happens is when the traffic leaves the VM, it doesn't flow directly into the physical adapter. No, it goes into the tunnel endpoint and then it goes through the physical adapter or it goes into a kernel module, yeah, but the tunnel endpoint is the point where the packet, including the header, the Geneve header, leaves the host. So what do we have on the physical network? When we inspect the physical network with Wireshark, we have the original packet from the VM. Yeah, so this is the uh, source IP from my uh, VM. And of course we have this, uh, we also have this on the, on the destination site and so we are going to copy this right here okay so we have our source ip uh, of this vm and it can be uh, 192.168.1.10 we have our destination ip uh, it's in the same subnet 192.168.1.11 yeah, because Geneve overlay networking offers segments that create layer two adjacency between different hosts. So these source and destination IP addresses are in the original frame that leaves the VM. Uh, so this is my destination IP and I have my payload and this is all part of the original frame that, uh, that leaves the virtual machine. But then the reason why we need to have an MTU size in the, uh, in the transport network of 1700 is that we're going to place an extra header around this original packet. And this is the Geneve header. The Geneve header contains the source IP address from your kernel port group. Uh, so this is the source IP address for the kernel port group on the source ESXi host. We also have a destination IP address of the tunnel endpoint on the destination IP host. We also have a VNI. And by adding this header in front of the original packet, we are able to encapsulate this packet into the Geneve overlay network. And what happens is that this packet, and when you go back into, uh, this packet leaves the VM, it's coming from this VM with the original source address 
192.168.1.10. It wants to go to this VM, 192.168.1.11. It's in the same subnet. And then it goes into this segment. It goes into the kernel module. It will get the extra header. It goes into the physical network. And then we have this source and destination header wrapped around this original packet that came from the VM. When we go into this host, we have decapsulation in the kernel module. And so this is where we are stripping off these addresses. The original packet goes to the segment and then this segment will forward the packet to the VM. So these VMs are in the layer two, in the same layer two network, the same broadcast domain. They're not aware what's happening on the physical side, virtual physical side. Um, and they simply are able to communicate with each other. The big benefit of using overlay networking is we can route this traffic. So we can put a router in here and we can say, okay, we're going to route the overlay the traffic from one subnet to the other. We're routing between tunnel endpoints. Those tunnel endpoints can be on different racks. They can be in different locations. Um, and so this is where we are able to bring layer two over layer three. Another big benefit is that the network department is not in control of our segment IDs anymore. And the VNIs are managed by us. They're managed by the NSX manager and we don't have to interact with the physical network when we want to add an additional uh, segment to our distributed switch. Nothing is changing on the physical network. Okay. Another cool thing, and then I go one step further, is when you have multiple VMs on an ESXi host in different segments, okay, let's do that. So we have a VM in segment one. So this is our VM in segment one, and we have another VM in segment two. This is in 192. The other one is in 192.168.2.10. And I assume, or we must assume that our subnet is slash 24. So when this segment has another segment ID, for instance, 5001, then these VMs, when they want to communicate with each other, normally they have to go all the way through a physical router because they had to jump from one VLAN to another VLAN. But now we have distributed routing. With distributed Muted routing, we have a router in the kernel of our ESXi host. Okay, so when you want to route from one VM to another VM on the same host, you don't have to travel through the physical network anymore because now the traffic goes from this VM, it goes into the router, and it goes back to this VM. So this is a distributed router, and every single ESXi host has. A router. So this is optimizing the east-west traffic dramatically because we don't have to hairpin all the way through a core router anymore. When you want to route to a VM on another host, we still have to travel over the physical network, but we don't have to travel all the way to the core router anymore because we are able to route the traffic uh, let's shift this guy a little bit here. We're able to route the traffic in the host where the traffic originates, then do the encapsulation, do the decapsulation, and go to the VM. So what we see is that when this VM wants to communicate with this VM, yeah, then it goes into the router. Traffic is always routed on the host where it's originating. It goes into the overlay network. It travels through the transport network. This is where the traffic is decapsulated. It's already in the correct network, so it's delivered through the virtual machine after it has been decapsulated. So that's the cool thing about overlay networking. We have more or less unlimited VNIs. The limit on an ESXi host is 10,000. Yeah, but it's, it's more than twice the limit we had on VLAN IDs. We don't have any um, 
any uh, we don't have to have any interaction with with the network department anymore uh, they simply provide a transport network with an mtu size that's big enough to host uh, overlay networking and then uh, we're done and on top of that we have the benefit of distributed services like distributed routing i want to show you one other distributed service and this distributed service is about the distributed firewall so every virtual machine has to travel from the virtual network adapter through the segment this can also be done on a regular distributed port group there is a special kernel module and this kernel module is able to inspect which traffic flows in and out of the vm and for all the egress and ingress traffic you have to go through this kernel module and then you're allowed to go to your switch kernel module switch so this will introduce a firewall for each individual adapter each individual vm when you are using a rule any any block and you're only configuring rules that allow traffic you are able to allow traffic into this vm that's no traffic there are several tools tools that can help you with discovering the traffic flows in your data center uh, network insight is one of them but the nsx also has uh, a tool where you can detect workflows and convert them into a rule set uh, but this gives you micro segmentation because every vm is isolated or yeah, only has rules that are uh, allowed this gives you zero trust so in this video we discussed segments we discussed distributed routing and we also discussed the distributed firewall eric sloof is signing off and keep visiting antipro.nl for these real cool whiteboard sessions